Today we're making chicken and broccoli. It sounds so boring and so simple, but hopefully with these tips, you're gonna be able to elevate it into something that tastes delicious and gets you excited to come back for more. So first I'm showing you some knife skills. We're removing the crowns from fresh produce, broccoli stalks with fresh crowns on them. You're gonna try and cut as close to the stalk as possible with your knife just to get the fronds off and remain intact with that stalk. So once you got the crowns off, you're gonna go ahead and put them on a sheet pan. I'll talk about that in a minute and I'll show you what it looks like, but clear off your workstation and now it's time to get to this stalk. So the only problem with the stalk is that the very bottom is really fibrous and it's just around the edges that it's super fibrous. Up near where you cut the crowns off, it's actually not too hard to eat. You could actually eat it just raw. So what we're doing here is I'm going around the edges, all four edges to cut off that really fibrous bottom part. A sharp knife is gonna help you a ton, so it's worth an investment. All those excess pieces right there, we're gonna just discard them. Those go into the compost bin. And now we're gonna take the stalks and we're gonna just chop them. Uh, whatever shape, whatever size you really want, but these can go right on the roasting pan with your crowns and they'll taste just as good and you'll get a lot of mileage out of the vegetables. So here we are. This is the sheet pan I was talking about. It's just a baking pan and you wanna spread your veggies out as evenly as possible. The more surface area that the veggies have with the actual pan, the better you're gonna get some caramelization, some color on your actual veggies when you roast them in the oven. I love these squeeze bottles. It helps to just application of oils. You don't have to have a squeeze bottle, but basically you're just gonna drizzle about an, a tablespoon of olive oil or two tablespoons of olive oil all over your broccoli. And then be sure to put a little bit of salt and black pepper onto your veggies when you roast them. This is gonna bring out a ton of flavor and it's just a simple, simple tool for anybody in the kitchen, a simple trick that all cooks do um, and a lot of amateur chefs or cooks at the, at the house don't do. So that's going into a 400 degree oven. And meanwhile, we're gonna build a sauce that's gonna act as a marinade and a sauce when we actually serve this dish at the end. So I'm using a mustard to build a base of this sauce. That's about four tablespoons worth of yellow mustard. Here I've got a high quality balsamic vinegar that I'm going to put in about one tablespoon's worth of. You see it kind of looks syrupy because it's really uh, reduced and condensed down into some really powerful flavors. Um, additionally, we're gonna go with a little bit of citrus. So citrus really brings out a whole nother level of flavor in your meals, something that not a lot of people do. I always have limes and lemons on hand to help get some more flavor and a little bit of that kick to anything that I'm eating. Pick a dried f spice that you love. I love paprika and I love the smoke variety. I throw a little bit, about a quarter, a quarter teaspoon into this particular marinade. And then I use my favorite tiny fork to whisk it up. And I'm gonna set that aside. Half of that's gonna be for a marinade and half of it's gonna be for a sauce. The next step is gonna be to prepare my protein. So I'm, I chose chicken thighs. I find chicken thighs to have a lot more flavor than chicken breast. The nutrient profile is not that much different. There's a little bit more fat, but if you're fat uh, conscious and you're trying to limit the total number of fat macros in your meals, you can go ahead and do what I'm doing right here, which is trim off any excess fat that's on those chicken thighs. Keep in mind, these are boneless, skinless chicken thighs, so the fat content's relatively low anyway, and I just love the flavor of dark meat when it comes to poultry. Once you got that cleaned up, throw it in a gallon Ziploc bag and bring your marinade to back to the party. That marinade is going to coat this chicken inside the Ziploc bag. And you wanna make sure that once you got half of that marinade from your sauce that you made before in the bag um, and you zip it up, you're gonna try and get as much air out of that bag as possible. If you get a lot of air out of that bag, it's gonna make sure there's a lot more surface contact with the chicken and that marinade. I'm, look, I'm massaging it around and making sure everything's well coated. And then I'm gonna take that bag and I'm gonna chuck it in the fridge for a couple hours while it lets that flavor penetrate. Now I'm ready to cook. I've got a medium, hot, medium high heat pan. This is a non-stick pan, but you can use a cast iron um, or stainless steel uh, pan. Um, 
and make sure that you don't overcrowd your pan because as you can see there's some of that marinade that's bubbling up we don't want to have too much meat in the pan so that it just starts to boil we're trying to get some good heat action on these chicken thighs so we can develop a little color get more flavor out of something that might be considered a little bit boring to some people just chicken or if it's chicken breast you want to get flavor at every possible turn that there is you may have missed it but once the chicken was in the pan i did put some salt and pepper on there just to get a little bit of extra seasoning remember i didn't put a lot of salt or pepper As a matter of fact i didn't put any salt and pepper in the marinade so you do want to get a little bit of direct salt and pepper onto that chicken before you're done cooking okay the heat got cut the chicken was done set it off to the side for a couple minutes that's what it looks like after it's done and now i am going to start plating up this meal that was 14 ounces of chicken to begin with so i put half of it on my plate so about seven ounces of chicken i'm going to take some of these broccoli crowns as well as some of the stalks you can see that they've got some crispiness to them uh, they've been roasted for about 20 to 30 minutes in the oven and now I've got the rest of that mustard, balsamic, citrus, marinade with the smoked paprika. I am going to just put it all over. And now I'm gonna go tuck in and enjoy this awesome dish. I hope this was helpful.